In this video, I'm going to be showcasing my biggest build yet. This build took me a few hours to build. It is absolutely massive, and I hope you guys enjoy. Also in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build the frame. And in another video, I'll show you how I went through the thought process of placing all of the decorations. But anyways, without further ado, let's get into it. This build is a absolute massive 42 meter by 20 meter at some parts. It is absolutely huge. Uh, compared to my other builds, it is absolutely dwarfing them. So let's go ahead and get into this. First off, we come in through the doors and we get into our crafting area. Most of the time when I'm playing, uh, I use my base to run in, craft up my gear, repair up my gear, and head right back out to go exploring. That's my play style. We also have a cartography table over here and a little bar area where we have potions, places to brew them, and also food. We have some cooking stations here so we can make said food. And then we also have our table and our throne that we can sit at and enjoy a feast with all of our Viking brothers. Over here, we have a portal setup. It's just a two portal setup. This one will always stay at home and you can use these signs here to remind yourself uh, what the other portals are named. Uh, so you can, for instance, put like Black Forest Base or something like that and then name this one and uh, you can keep everything uh, set up uh, nice and neatly there. We have a very small storage space over here. Um, by the time that you're building something like this, you will more than likely already have a storage area uh, dedicated all to itself. So I figured we could just have this over here for like go kits. Uh, and if you're new to the game and you don't know what go kits are, uh, it's basically, uh, oh no, I died. Uh, near one of my portals. I can just grab my stuff, go through the portal, and, uh, you know, you'll be all set to go retrieve your gear. Now, back here, we have a little sleeping area. We could really only fit two beds back here uh, comfortably, um, and then we added some armor stands. Now, you could uh, use these just to store extra kits, or you can use it uh, as, like, full roleplay where, you know, you take off all of your armor, put it onto the stand, and then you go to bed. Just depends on how you like to play. Next, we'll go ahead and come upstairs, where we have our nice little trophy area. Now, my thought process behind this um, was basically, you know, hey, look, it's our armor that we use to uh, steal the dragon's egg. But that is going to be it for what we have done with the place. Now let's go ahead and go build it. The front area is a 6x6 six six if you want to build this in segments. Uh, I would suggest it because then you can just keep moving things back as you build um, if you don't have all the resources to start with. The next area is a 14x8. And then you have a little two by five over here on the side. Now, when you are placing it, you want to go from the back and go up five and then out one, two, and then five more, uh, four more this way. And lastly, you want a two by two out here for the uh, deck. Now in total, this is going to take 162 stone foundations, which is quite a lot, but it is definitely a lot of space to work with and you really shouldn't have to upgrade your base ever again. Next, we're gonna go ahead and place the first row of walls. We are going to skip this part right here for now. First, we're gonna be starting off with the dark wood doors and then we are going to be wrapping around just normal wood walls all the way around the building 
except for the area that I was just talking about to skip for now. This layer will take two dark wood doors and 51 walls. Next, we're going to go ahead and take this up a second level. And just like the first layer, it is going to take another 51 walls. Next, we are going to do a layer of wooden half walls around the whole thing. Next, we're going to go ahead and worry about this little part that we've been skipping. And what we're going to want to do is just place a line of these wooden half walls. And then we are going to want to grab our 45 degree uh, wooden walls, place them in those two spots there. And then we want wooden walls in those spots there. And then we, of course, want to cap these off as well. Sometimes it can be a little finicky. Uh, you can just build something up really quick. I'm going to fly for it but just like that. Our next step in the build is to build these wood iron poles into the corners of the entire house. Just because this is a much bigger build, it does need extra supports or we can't put the roof on it at all. Yes, we do have a little bit of overlap here, but that is okay. Um, we don't really need it uh, in here. You can put it here if you want, but if you want to save on the iron, you don't have to. I'm going to uh, just because I don't have to worry about the cost. And it will help, but it's not, it's not necessary. Now that I've shown you that, just go ahead and put these wood beams just to cover it up to make it look a little bit nicer along all of the ones that we just did. I'd just like to quickly apologize for my lack of planning here. I thought I gave myself enough room, uh, but I didn't. Uh, it shouldn't really affect our building too much, but just in case it does, I am sorry. Next, we're going to go ahead and start working on the roof. So we're going to go ahead and place these two wooden doors there, and then we want two wooden walls right next to them. And then we want our 45 degree angled roofs right there. And then we want to come up to the next one and go there. Grab two walls and place it there. And then finish off by capping it off with these there. Um, obviously, if you're doing this not on creative, you'll have to uh, build your way up. Uh, it shouldn't be too difficult to do that. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and put our little X there just to uh, give it the Viking look. Next, we're going to take our thatch roofs and just fill in this roof all the way down to this spot here. Because what we have to do next is a little complicated. Now we want to do the same on this side. For the next part, I figured it would be easier to just show you like so. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your 45 degree angle uh, bits and build up all the way to the top and then place a full wall uh, next to each one of those pieces. And you will get that nice little thin look back here. So let's go ahead and just replicate that really quick. Like so. And then grab our wooden walls. And like I said, place them in next to them. Just like that. And now just to have it uh, be a little bit better looking. Uh, I like to grab the 45 degree inverted walls. And uh, this will be easier doing it from the ground. Just placing these in there like so. Make a little bit of a point there. And it just makes it look a lot cleaner. Next, we're going to go ahead and fill in the roof. 
and we are just going to take it up to this third one for now and now we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side and we can go ahead and fill in this part all the way up to the same area up here and i forgot to mention that the reason why we are stopping up here is for two reasons one you can do this all from the ground up to that point and we want to leave a little spot for that and it'll just be easier to have everything else there waiting for us i also forgot to mention that we also need these wood and iron holes in here as well uh right there and also right here then we can go ahead and just cover it up just to make it look better because if we don't do that a couple of these uh final pieces up here uh don't want to stay but that should make it so they will and as you can see they are only orange just uh just waiting for it to update yeah, only orange. Another way that we could uh, fix that is uh, by doing this uh, wall over here uh, all the way to the top first, which uh, we're going to do right now. So we're basically going to do the same thing that we did on the other side. We're just going to go ahead and skip the doors and go ahead and just place all of these in because we already have the spots there. And I'm going to opt to just have it be a flat wall. So we can go ahead and uh, just get this done quicker. If you want windows and stuff back here, uh, you definitely could. But it might, it might ruin the design if uh, you're wanting to do exactly what I did on the inside of that one. Then we can just go ahead and cap this off and continue with the build the way that we can work on this top area up here is just by simply placing wooden ladders here you only need two and then uh, if you want you can uh, place a couple inside of the actual thatch roofs and you can get up here uh, you can also use the uh, wooden floor one by one method as well now, in order to get the roof fully finished, we will also have to uh, go from this exact spot where you place these other ones and just follow the line all the way over here. And we can just take those up like that and then do the same over here. Just follow the line over like so. And then we will need more supports uh, throughout to allow this to stay up to its max. The way that I decided to add the extra supports was to make a little bit of a balcony. So what we want to do is we want to start one back from this part of the house and we just want to go up four. And if you really want, you could have this be just one but I kind of like the two look better, so I'm going to go ahead and do that because at least then we won't be bumping our head uh, and we can actually have space to walk. And we're also going to go ahead and wrap the basically the entire thing in these uh, two by two wooden floors. And we're going to go ahead and stop right here. Then we want to basically just fill in this uh, little area here with the ones that we missed. Like so. Next, we're going to go ahead and take our wood iron poles and just place them in the most vital areas of it. After you get these placed in, we can go up top and place them in to go all the way up to the roof. Make sure when you are using the snap point for the last one, make sure you're using the snap point for the roof and not the bottom 
of the previous one or it will poke out. Next, we're going to go ahead and just cover them up. Once again, making sure that you don't clip through the roof. Now that our supports are in place, we can go ahead and get back to finishing the roof. So what we're going to want to do is place two and then come to the other side and place six. Repeat the same on the other side as well. And then cap off each one of the sides with the X. And then we get to work on this part here. So the way that you're going to want to do it is you're going to want to line the entire top of these with the two meter beams. And then we're going to cap off these spots here. And over here. Like so. And then we can use the two meter pulls like this on each one of these intersections. Make sure you are putting one right there as well. And then go ahead and cap these off. Then we want to take our 45 degree uh, wood beams and place them up here like so. And then we finish it off by adding our thatch roofs at 45 degrees and of course capping them off with the X's. And lastly, for the roof, we just want to go ahead and add a ridge line along the entire top using two meter wood beams. And then we're also going to go ahead and add these 45 degree wooden beams on the ends and then we're going to go ahead and line the whole thing with these thatch roofs and lastly the only things that we really have left for the main structure of the build are the finishing touches so something that i like to do is come in here and uh, add these 45 degree angle wooden beams in here just to give an extra upside down V aesthetic. I think it looks really nice. Uh, we already use two of them in the sides just for uh, a better snap point for the roofs anyways. And I think it looks really nice. And we also want to go ahead and make sure that we have capped off all of our extra supports. Just like so. And lastly, we're going to go ahead and finish off with the porch. So we need two stairs and then we need some wooden poles. We're going to close this door just so it's out of the way. And we can go ahead and put these wooden beams here. And then we'll go ahead and add these one meter wooden poles just for the baluster railing look and just like that and two more of these up here like so and you could stop right there um, you could add um, item frames with different trophies as you can see uh, this part is exposed to the elements so uh, if you want it to look pristine all the time, you will have to repair it every single time that, that it rains. Uh, to me, it's really not that big of a deal, uh, so I don't mind having it there. Anyways, this video took a long time to make, so if you could drop a like on this video, that would be much appreciated. Subscribe for more Valheim videos in the future. If you use this, at me on Twitter or in our Discord, show me what you added. Links are down in the description below. Thank you for watching, and as always, GG.